how to name angles. So the most important thing about knowing how to name an angle is being able to identify the vertex. So the definition of a vertex is the point at which two lines meet and intersect. So we'll see here that this line and then this line both meet at this point A. So it can then be identified that A is the vertex. And so when naming, the most important part is that the vertex is always in the center of the name. So you can either start from this point or this part, but remember that A always has to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. So what would we name this angle? BAC. That's great. And so the way that naming is symbolized is through this um, symbol that looks like a miniature angle. So be sure to memorize that as that will come up on the ACT a lot to symbolize an angle. Is there another way we could name this? CAB. Awesome. So same thing, C, A, B. So now we'll move on to a little bit more of a complex one, and we'll see that there's multiple lines. So you're creating two different degrees. So first, let's focus on this small angle at which 40 degrees is denoted. So what would we name this angle? Um, L, K, N. Awesome. L, K, N. So now what would we name this 25 degree angle? M, K, N. That's great. So now ignoring this M, what would we label this larger angle from point L to point N? L, K, N. That's great. So then you see that there's two different degree degrees here separating them. So if we did the same thing and ignored this M, could we figure out what the total degree is for life angle L, K, N? 65. Yeah, and how did you figure that out? Um, adding 40 and 25. That's great. So then we know that by adding these two degrees, we can find out the larger degree for the bigger angle. It's great. So now we're going to move on to the next, and that's going to be about categorizing angles. So there's four different types of angles. So you find acute, obtuse, right, and straight. And so I'm going to go through these examples and help you identify which one will be placed where. So we'll see here in angle EFG that there's a 45 degree marker here. So by the rules of what an acute angle is, it means that it has to be less than 90 degrees. And so because this is 45, this will be an acute angle. And again, because it's less than 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. So then we'll see the opposite here. And in this angle XYZ, we'll see that's 160 degrees. And so this will be an obtuse angle because the rule for that is that it's any angle that's greater than 90 degrees. All right, and so then down here, we'll see this little box on this angle SRT, and a little box square is meant to uh, show that it's a 90 degree angle. And you'll see this showing up on the ACT a lot as well, so be sure to memorize that whenever there's a box placed on an angle, that means 90 degrees. Don't assume if it looks like this, but there isn't a square that it is 90 degrees because you cannot assume that based off the information you're given. So because this is a 90 degree angle, this will be called a right angle because that's the term for when it is exactly 90 degrees. All right, so then this last example, we see it's a line that's marked as having a 180 degree point. So this is known as a straight line, and that's because it is at 180 degrees, and so we'll know that makes a perfect line. All right, so then the next section is about congruent angles. So you'll see here that angle AEB is 50 degrees. And the rule for congruent angles is that anything that is mirrored on the opposite end will be the same value. So we can take into account that angle CED will also be 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then we can use that to figure out what these other angles are here by using math, similar to what you did over there. So what would it be if we we're trying to figure out what this angle right here is? Maybe 130. Yeah, and why is that? because it equals 180 and that's a straight line. That's great. And so then taking into account the same congruency rules that we saw here, this angle here will also be 130 degrees because it is mirrored. And you can check your work and see that this also makes 180 uh -huh. and these make 180, so you can check it all around to make sure that it's correct. And so then here you'll see parallel lines and these are two lines that are both at 180 degrees and they're marked by arrows. That means they'll never um, meet each other. And so then you can um, refer to them as parallel lines. And often on the ACT, you'll see them marked as line AB parallel. This is the symbol for parallel, which you'll see on the ACT, so remember that as well, parallel to Y, Z. And so that's how you would denote that. Mm -hmm. And so then finally with transverse lines, we'll see I took the same parallel lines and now there's a line running through them. And so 
doing that, you'll see that there's more angles that have appeared. And it's been given that the small angle A is 50. So using the same math that we used over here for congruent angles, what would this little angle B be for in degrees if this is 50? 130 as well. 130, yeah, that's great. And so the cool thing about congruent angles is that you'll see this mirroring effect in all of these angles. So you'll see that this angle here is equal to this angle here. So this will also be 130 degrees. And then this will also be 50 because it does have that mirroring factor of congruency. And so then you'll see that angles such as like this B and then this G are also the same angles. So this would also be 130. It would be the same for all these different ones. And so these would also be 50 and 50. And you can do the check in your math as well and see that these all add up to 180 degrees. And so all of this are the basics of angles that you'll need to know for the ACT.